place my boat is anchored in is called Bassas de India. 200 miles to the east lies the Mozambican coast. 200 miles to the west and you end up in Madagascar. There is no real landmass anywhere nearby. And even here, land appears only during low tide, submerging as soon as high tide comes in. It has been a notorious invisible obstacle for many ships throughout ages, dating back even all the way to the 16th century. Below the surface is no exception. Such a remote place, not necessarily friendly towards humans, it has however become a perfect place for marine life to thrive. Getting here to be able to document this area has proven challenging. It took about 48 hours, one way only, of constant sail in a purposefully built catamaran. Me and my crew have managed to spend five days before we had to run away from incoming rough weather. However, thanks to special technical dive devices called rebreathers, we could spend most of the day underwater. No bubbles and noise allowed us for some unexpected interactions with curious massive potato bass, who simply would not leave us. These big fish, easily reaching one and a half meters in length, would follow us throughout the whole day of diving, usually keeping a healthy distance behind. While they are known for being docile and would not attack unless provoked, you have to keep in mind they have a set of teeth you would not want to try on yourself. I have also seen a few green turtles, however they were usually just passing by, possibly heading to a nearby atoll located 70 miles to the north, called Europa Island, known to be a breeding and nesting ground for many green turtles. Only big coral bombies are able to survive rough ocean conditions and appear from the distance like beacons making for great navigation points underwater. Those rather unhealthy looking areas can still be full of fish life, with schools of Fusilius most common. Fast jackfish and slightly bigger kingfish are also patrolling the edges of the reef. On the opposite side of the atoll, however, there is plenty of coral slopes covered completely with different coral species. Some spots dominated by soft corals and some by hard table and finger corals. You could spot patches of sand with tiny timid garden eels waiting for food coming with passing current. But the most interesting animal around were obviously sharks. Most common shark to be found on the outside edge of the atoll is a silver tip shark with easy to recognize white tips on all of its fins. Another species is a Galapagos shark. This is a very remote region for this species to thrive. At the very last dive, just before I was ready to ascend, I had a huge surprise. A sub-adult whale shark passed above my head, though he didn't stay for long. 